Uh, morning geographers, um, what I'm going to do now is just go through uh, a coast exam question with you, okay? Um, look at how the answers, how we do it, um, and sort of exam technique with it as well. Okay, okay so um, looking at GCC paper one, paper two, paper three, so uh, you do three exam papers, one, two, three, okay? Each one is an hour and a half. Okay, paper one is physical geography. Paper two is human geography. And paper three is what's called a DME, decision-making exercise, where you get given the resources um, and you get questions on this resource pack that you have. You get given, it's like called a pre-release booklet. Um, and also there's questions about field work. It's more skills-based and you're looking at um, graphs and interpretation um, whereas there's a little bit of knowledge but really the knowledge is really those two there uh, and you do some interpretation as well figures and so on but really that's the knowledge bit so paper paper one which we're looking at now okay is uh, here okay this is an AQA this is uh, 2018 May 2018 make sure you read the front cover Answer all questions in section A and B. Answer two questions in section C. You can't do all the questions in section C because you haven't done them all. Because we have, we have, you have to select certain topics. Uh, make sure you write in black. Um, that's a, a key thing because they, uh, they scan them and mark them. And it's clear if it's in black, basically. And make sure you've got all the kit you need. Because you not, might need a calculator. And a rubber and a pencil for sketches and annotations and so on. Okay, so... First question, section A is all about hazards, which uh, you'll do in the beginning of year 10. Uh, and I'm going to go through the coast question with you this morning. So you've got some interpretation there, then you've got some, some knowledge at the end, interpretation looking at graphs. Uh, this is all about tropical storms, this question, and sort of the processes of how you respond to secondary, primary, secondary effects and solutions and so on. Living world we do as well, section B, we yeah, answer all these questions, this is to do with like ecosystems, uh, rainforests, uh, you can see there rainforests, you might interpret a climate graph and so on, you get a resource, a, a, a photograph and you have to sort of look at the photograph and make sure you do answer using the photograph, six markers explaining that, okay, so that's and then you have to pick a cold environment because we don't do hot. So we do Svalbard and living and the problems of living in a cold environment and the economies, how they develop. Okay, that's in section B. And then section C, let's get rid of that now. Section C is uh, you answer two, two questions out of three. We do coasts and we do glaciation, okay? So we're going to do coastal landscapes in the UK now. So for question one, we need, it says study figure 10 in the insert. This is an insert booklet, okay? And you get this as well as, as your exam paper. One to 50,000 ordnance survey map, here you go. Ned Willicum, okay, in North Devon. Using figure 10, give the four figure grid reference for a headland with cliffs. Okay, now also what you need, if you're not sure, you have you get given this as well, which is the which is the key. Okay? And you need to do the four-figure grid reference. So just to remind you how to do the four-figure grid reference. So if you imagine if we're looking at this, uh, 39 is there, 40. 41, 42, and along here we've got 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So if we want to see that square there, for example, uh, we go along the corridor and up the stairs. It refers to the bottom left hand corner of that square, so it's 43, 40 for that square there. So that's the sort of, that's the skill. So we now have to apply it to this. If we take that idea, all right, and if we look at um, 
our legend as well, uh, our key. So the question's asking us, use a figure 10, give the four figure grid reference for a headland with cliffs. So a headland with cliffs, if we look on our, we look on our scale here, there's a cliff, which is the sort of like a, it's got like a black sort of angular bits on it all over. Uh, there's a bit of a cliff as well, steep side, that might be inland. So you're looking for something with, um, with black jagged lines and a headland that sticks out in the landscape, that's your knowledge, isn't it? So if we're looking here uh, and it's asking us for the headland with cliffs, okay? So as a geographer, you'd know that there's a headland sticking out, jutting out, Mort Point, there's a headland with cliffs, there's a headland with cliffs. Uh, 42, 40, I would say this one's pretty good. Okay, so the answer would be 42, 40. Okay, now the trouble is with, with this skills question, often you spend ages looking at this and you don't get time to get into the teeth of the question. So I often, I would advise, I say to some students, to do the long question first and then come back to that when you're not rushing because if your adrenaline's pumping and it's the first question you're doing and you're reading, you're looking, you can get lost and it's only worth one mark. Whereas these questions later are, are longer marks, but that's, that's up to open for choice really. The next question, using figure 10, which of the following coastal features is not shown in grid square 4339. So 4339, so there's your grid square there. We've got like a beach, got like a cliff, got a wave cut platform there, look, which is that jagged bit. We look on here, you can tell us that. But as geographers, we know that there's a beach, there's a wave cut platform, this is Croyd. You've probably all been to Croyd. Um, You've got probably sand dunes at the back as well. Dunes, it says dunes there. So we've got dunes, we've got a wake up platform, we've got a sandy beach, we haven't got a spit. So, and you know what a spit is, that sticks out in the landscape and it's formed by longshore drift. Okay, so there we go. Moving on then. So we'll take that question, we've looked, done that. So figure three, using figure 10, again, what is the length and average width of Woolacombe Beach between 456, 438, this is six figure. So four, five, and then six little ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, and 43, eight. So there, that's still X, okay? And then our Y is there, it's been labeled. So you don't have to waste time looking for your six figure, it's already done for you. X to Y, and you have to work out the beach length, okay? Now if you're not sure, you can buy uh, like you can just go through each question, each answer. I, I would do this one at the end, okay? Um, and you need a ruler, and you would uh, you'd, you'd work out the length, okay? From there to there, okay. With your ruler, and then you go to your scale on here, and you look at how long it is. So if we look at it, it's a little bit more than three kilometers. It's what three point three kilometers, 3.3 kilometers, 3.3 um, kilometers. You don't need to know the width. You haven't got time to look at that or you can measure it. But if you know it's 3.3 kilometers, it's just gonna be that one, isn't it? Pretty quickly. So you just bounce straight into that quickly, all right? But as I said, these sort of things can throw you and you can waste time going around in circles trying to chase, chase the answers, okay? Using figure 10 again, suggest one reason why this coastline has suitable conditions for the formation of dunes. So you've got a massive dune system at the back of the beaches all around here, okay, which is blown in why this coastline is suitable. Um, why would I suggest there's dunes there? It's a wide, there's a, it's a wide sandy beach, okay? Um, and so the wind would pick it up and, and, and place it between the two sheltered headlands. Um, Lots of sediment, a good supply of sediment. That's another answer I would say. Uh, the beaches face, face west, so the prevailing winds blow the sand in. Uh, and, and you've got like a gentle slope here and there, which would allow the sand dunes to develop. So as long as you say one of those points, then you'll get a mark, okay? Sheltered uh, between two headlands, large sandy beach, open to the prevailing winds. Uh, gentle slope for dunes to develop. Okay, so that's our figure 10. We've done that one. Okay, and now we're looking at figure 11. 
Figure 11 uh, is this one here, uh, a photograph of the part of the coastline shown in figure 10. So here we have, well, what do you reckon that is? There's a, that's, a lot, that's a wave cut platform, isn't it? And there's your cliff line. So that's where the cliff used to be, and through process of erosion, it's retreated back. Okay, so the question's asking us, I expect, what is Z? That's what I expect they're asking us. And there you go. Identify the landfall marked Z. So wave cut platform is the answer. Okay, that's what they want. Uh, there are other names for it, but we're going to just stick with wave cut platform. Right, and then 3.6, moving through again. So that's looking at our figures. We've done our figure looking. Okay, now we're looking at, and probably this is a bit more knowledge based now. Explain how a coastline of headlands and bays forms and changes over time. So we need to use lots of key terms and so on. Um, what would I say? Lots of um, level one, level two, level three, it's graded, but that would just confuse you. Really what I want is, is some description and then some explanation. Um, so what would I say? I'd say um, that you've got uh, differences in rock resistance. Okay, you've got um, hard and soft rock erodes uh, differently. Uh, hard is slow, soft is quicker. Okay, so it's all to do with rock type. Uh, we could use a word, we could use this term, differential erosion. You also need to define what a headland is. It's a piece of hard rock, a landform that sticks out or juts out into the landscape. A bay is an area of soft rock where sediment collects often. There's different sizes of them. Um, you could mention as well that they're formed by the, the four processes of erosion. Okay, you can talk about hydraulic action, you can talk about corrosion, which is also called abrasion. Uh, you can talk about how wave refraction sometimes uh, en enables sediment to go into, into the bay as well. You could use that. You can't use all of this, but you'll get some of these key terms in. It's like getting all these key terms in. Four processes of erosion, hard and soft, they're fine. That should get you plenty of marks. But you can say, the question's asking you to just change over time. So you can say the thousands of years, the softer, less resistant rock will be eroded more quickly than the harder, more resistant rock, and differences become more pronounced. Eventually, there will be headlands that stick out into the sea and bays where the land has been worn back. Uh, you could talk about wave refraction. You say further development can be credited due to wave refraction. The energy of the waves is then focused on the headlands and spread out in the bays. As the cliffs on the headlands wear back, a wave cut platform may develop. Wave energy is less in the bays, so beaches may form there. So the all the wave action, the high energy hits the headlands. And then um, and you could also, if you wanted to get good as well, get more, more credit. Okay, I would talk, I'd prefer to figure 10 and 11. And you could actually talk about uh, Mort Point which is on the map, and Baggy Point, which is on the map, which I'll show you here, look. So you've got here, look, you've got Baggy Point, Mork Point, there's your two headlands, and if you gave the grid reference for it, that would be quite a good reference. You talk about Willacombe Bay, and the Willacombe Sands, that's the bay. So if you actually refer to the figures, they haven't asked you to, so it's a bit sneaky, but if you did, that would show like good understanding of, of place, as well as just explanation. Um, That'll get you the marks, I think. All right, so that's that one. So let's move on to the next question. The next question is normally the big question. Six marks, it's not nine marker, it's a six marker. You don't get nine markers in all of them. Um, but really, what's the question asking us? And hopefully you'd have done this question lots of times before we actually uh, sit the exam and this is a sort of question that you always tend to get because I don't know what else they can ask you really um, Coastal management schemes are effective in protecting the coastline from physical processes. Do you agree? So you have to initially Say if you agree. I agree with this statement Okay, that's important that you 
you talk about that. Okay, it says using an example to explain in your answer. So we could use with the pay, couldn't we? But if you didn't have that in your head, look at the map you just looked at and talk about that. Okay, and have a look at how the coast is protected there at Willigan Bay, if you want, if you're desperate. But we live at Buda Widmouth. We know that there's lots of coastal management schemes. So what would I say? Uh, to what extent? Coastal ma management schemes are effective? Yes, they, yes, they are. Um, uh, I would say they are. Uh, it depends on the, on the value of the land. Uh, if it's worth protecting. Okay, that's what I would say. I would say I would define coastal management. It's like caring for the coastline, isn't it? Caring for the coastline. And then I'd, I'd go straight into saying there are different types of management schemes that are effective in protecting the coastline. For example, um, there are the hard approach, and you can talk about different types. So you could say at Widmouth Bay, you have uh, in North Cornwall, make it clear that you know that. Okay, and you talk about uh, gabions, although there are some of these, but they won't know that. There is some little things at the back of the cafe. Um, you could talk about um, rock armour. Okay. And you could say these hold the line and they protect the car park because that's worth money to the tourist industry and the, national, and the, and the council. Um, and they're the hard, hard structures that protect it. But also say there are other approaches that uh, are effective as well and argue that they are probably more attractive. They blend in with the environment, but the, I mean, say the hard approach is very expensive. Okay, so you could talk about sort of the soft alternative approaches, alternative approaches. So what would I talk about? I would say, well, if you go to Widmouth Bay, if you go to Widmouth Bay, you could say um, they, do, they do the Christmas trees in the dunes and that, that, protects, that protects the landscape. Uh, and also they, they put up like sort of wooden structures which hold which hold hold the sand in place and they and they encourage they encourage uh, marram grass development, sand dune development and creates habitats so it's better for the environment. It's cheaper, better for the environment. Okay, uh, and it encourages, and it's good because you'd argue that coastal management schemes are good. So then you'd have to say, well, I think that coastal management schemes are are, are effective because you've actually quite. I do agree. However, they, however, um, there are types. Uh, I would say that um, the soft approach ones are better because they they blend in with the natural environment, but also in the future you've got rising sea levels and I think holding the line is, is something that's going to get more and more expensive and it's better to sort of let nature take its course. Uh, and, and you could drop in the word managed retreat. Okay, they don't do managed retreat really at, in Widmouth, they more hold the line of Christmas trees and so on. However, you could say that there are other places in the country where they do that, you get, mar you get marked for that. So what, what other arguments could we say? Um, yeah, what would you need to get the marks? Uh, understanding of hard engineering schemes, which involve using artificial structures to control natural processes. These are designed to reduce wave energy or create a barrier between the land and the sea. So you've talked about the hard approach and you've also explained why they're good. That's what they want you to say, which I've just told you there, okay? Strategies listed in them include rock armour, riprap, gabions, groins, um, but you can mention other revetments, but really we're talking about Widmouth Bay. Seawalls can be effective, so you can talk about seawalls at Widmouth Bay as well. Uh, they absorb and deflect wave energy back to the sea, however they are expensive to construct and require regular repair. Erosion at the base can undermine the seawall foundations. Um, riprap, rock armour consists of massive blocks of natural rocks you're describing the different ones, okay. Um, rock part up the base, they require less maintenance than a sea wall. If resistant rocks like granite are used, they are very eroded very slowly. 
However, they are expensive to extract, transport and place in position, although less expensive than sea walls, but they are effective. Groins are wooden or rock structures, you can talk about those, but probably we're overdoing it now. And then you say, okay, I agree that these hard, hard approaches are good, but to get the best marks, you say, no, there's another type as well. There's these soft engineering strategies, a managed retreat, beach management, this replaces beach or cliff material that has been removed by erosion or longshore drift. So you talk about the role of the, of the, of the, um, of the Christmas trees and what they do. And then you have the argument about the value of the land and that will get you lots of good marks. Okay. Uh, but if you have evidence of an evaluation, so you say, I agree, however, which you've said, because you said, well, the hard's good, but the soft is, is effective as well. And I think the long term, probably the soft is a better way forward. You've given an opinion, uh, and that's your AO2 grading, which other Mrs. Leverton's going to talk about AO1, AO2, and AO3, but you, you should get good marks then. Okay, so that's the, the little question, that's coasts. Okay, and then you don't, you don't go straight into rivers because you're not doing rivers and don't attempt it because we haven't done it. Okay, so you won't do rivers. And then you have to do glaciation, which is a topic that um, you'll be doing, you're doing currently in year nine, some students. Uh, and then you'll get refreshed in year 10. Uh, and it's the same sort of format again, if you look for glaciers, you've got like a map activity. Once again, look, look for the length and then it's the same sort of idea, isn't it? One reason, it's the same thing again. This is just, it's, it's ice. Got a picture of a quarry, which way is it looking? But don't get lost in these little questions because you can waste lots of time. Feature of a quarry, it's a bit like a feature of a wave cut platform or whatever, wasn't it? And then explain how a formation of a quarry is formed, which is a bit like the one we just talked about with regards to our headland and bay question. Same sort of format. And then a question, it's like an opinion, and you've got to argue the point. Okay, and that's about the Lake District. All right. I'm asking.